my name's Helen Bentley and this is Shimwa News Agency. I'm coming to you today from the CIIE in Shanghai. This is on from the 5th of November to the 10th of November and today is opening day. This venue has over 2,600 exhibitors and around 400,000 professional visitors are expected to come here over the following days. One area which had a huge list of people wanting to be involved was the medical area due to the current pandemic situation. So, to start off our first live from the CIIE, I've come here to the Thermo Fisher Scientific to speak to their China president. Here he is, Tony Ricardo, lovely Hi, to meet Helen. you. Hi Helen, nice to meet you and welcome to your viewers. Yes, so tell us a little bit about um, Thermo Fisher, how long have you been in China? Well, Thermo Fisher has been in China almost 40 years now. This is our second largest region globally and we have over 5,000 Thermo Fisher colleagues based here. And what sort of products or services do you make? You know, Thermo Fisher is uh, the world leader in serving science and, and really we cut across many industries of healthcare, academia, government research, pharmaceutical, biopharmaceutical and, you know, industrial and applied markets. So we really serve all of science. And of course, when I came to this stall, I mentioned COVID. It's, it's a topic of the moment. I'm wondering, can you tell us maybe a little bit about what your work uh, regarding COVID is and if you could show us around your stall? Sure, sure. Let me start by bringing you through to one of our key instrument and technologies that's actually served COVID at the beginning of the outbreak. Okay. Okay, so this is, what is it, Tony? So this is a very, very large microscope uh, in very basic terms. It's an um, electron microscope, so it really measures down to the nano level. And what you can see here is uh, actually an image uh, of the coronavirus protein when the outbreak started back in the early of the year right here this image is uh, the actual first image of the coronavirus protein that was identified in Westlake University here in China and it's really helped us now to determine how to detect coronavirus firstly and now as we work on a vaccine how do we overcome the virus as well yeah that's amazing so Tony you're saying that this whole um gray box this is this is the microscope i mean this is a bit different to maybe what a lot of our viewers at home would understand to be a microscope exactly it is so behind this gray cover is actually what would look like a microscope we would take a sample and put it behind that image and identify it as you see here so yes it's electron and therefore it requires significant power to get down to that nano level yeah okay so we're starting at the nano level um, can you maybe take us on a journey through what, what do you do once, once you've isolated this? What, 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 do, what happens next? Yeah, so as we've looked at the protein, we've identified the protein. The first thing we did, uh, you know, in, not we as, as in Thermo Fisher, but scientists did basically was start to learn how to detect coronavirus in patients. And the, the help that Thermo Fisher has provided in that process is to come along to um, the biopharma and pharma section here and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about one of the detection uh, systems okay. that's used in the actual sample processing part of, of that uh, of that workflow. Okay. So this instrument right here, um, it's actually a, a brand new instrument, it's an upgrade but it's uh, been released here for the first time at CIE and in China. Now what this is, this is basically our Kingfisher Apex system and it's used at the beginning of the workflow of sample preparation. So as we take a sample from a patient, uh, whether it's saliva or you know through through the nose, and that sample then is processed. And this instrument basically takes 96 of those samples, puts them through an eight-step process to uh, really purify the sample for it to then be detected in one of our sequencing instruments, which we also have here. Okay, and, and so how long how long does that process sort of take? So you put it in there and how long does the, the scientists need to wait until they get those results? It's a very quick process. So it's an automated system, uh, 96 wells of a sample. That eight step process will take less than 20 minutes. Okay, and my question would be, you have 96 samples in there. I mean, how do you know there's no cross contamination between them? Is yeah, it's an excellent question. And you know, obviously false positives, false negatives is something we want to avoid. So Thermo Fisher has worked tirelessly over the last few months to make sure that our detection systems have zero uh, cross-contamination. Uh, so we, we, stand by, we stand by that and um, you know, we've been very proud of the results. 
And so you said this was one of the products that you're you're launching here at, at the event. Um, how many products have you actually brought to the event? Uh, you know, to to uh, showcase as, as the first offering, so to speak. Yeah, so today at the CIA we have, or well, this week we have 70 products, 70 innovative products. Uh, 20 of those, in fact, are actually newly released this year. The Apex was the most recent. Okay. And um, I understand that you're, you, know, you have a lot of equipment that's here, but also that you have different areas where you're, you're focused on. Can you tell me a little, little bit more about that? Yeah, so, you know, as, as you think about what we've walked through, we've walked through the academic and research side, which is the microscope and detection of the virus, uh, into pharmaceutical and biopharma, where we're developing uh, vaccines, we're detecting the coronavirus. Uh, and then overall, in terms of public health and safety, um, really this area is about really bringing, all, bringing that all together. So healthcare, obviously coronavirus being the key focus, food safety, uh, to make sure that, you know, agriculturally here in China that we're detecting, um, you know, the microorganisms that are in food and making sure that they're safe to eat. Um, and then overall, from an environment perspective, um, air pollution, um, obviously a big issue here in China and other, elsewhere. And so really the technology is behind making sure that the air that we're breathing is clean. Okay, okay. So do you have any standout um, items here that, you, that you'd like to show me? I would love to show you through uh, one of uh, our additional booths. So you've just walked through our 400 square meter booth. We have another one, 100 square meters, uh, not too far from here. But I'll take you through this magic door. And through that, you'll see we have our COVID uh, mobile detection uh, platform, which we are placing next to hospitals, next to rural areas that really need that volume COVID testing, but don't have the resources to do it. And we've packaged that up into a mobile center. Okay. And for those of you at home, this door would be magical if it wasn't for the fact that we are coming to you live. This is Helen Bentley from Xinhua News Agency. And I'm here looking at some of the innovations that are related to COVID and the medical area. And Tony is gladly taking me through. So shall we go through? Please. So, Tony, you told me that Fermo Fisher has been here for 40 years. So why, why come to the CIAE? What, what benefits does a company like yours that's already established in China, why would you come? Yeah, so the CIAE has now been running for three years. And back in 2018, uh, you know, the first year we uh, decided to attend, we felt that it was a great platform because it was really about how China is opening up and you know really the imports uh, from multi many multinational companies like us on display so we felt that it was another great platform for us to really show our china community and globally how we are supporting um, our mission here in china mm -hmm. and how about your presence in china where, where do you have your bases your headquarters can i understand a little bit more about you know the company's actual presence here yeah, sure. So, you know, firstly, as I said, we have 5,000 colleagues uh, that are based here, second largest region for us globally. Uh, we have eight manufacturing centers uh, spread around uh, China. Uh, our main manufacturing centers are in Suzhou. We actually have just opened up recently, two months ago, another uh, site, uh, over 10,000 square meter site, that is focused on the biopharma segment. And that is to produce single use technologies as companies are scaling up to develop vaccines, for example. So we're supporting that. Um, and you know, eight, as I said, eight manufacturing facilities, mainly um, to, towards the uh, you know, Shanghai area, yeah. some in Guangzhou, and then the application centers as well, which is uh, eight centers that are designed to really show our customers hands-on how to do their work with all of our technologies. Okay, so for those of you at home, uh, this is Helen Bentley. I'm here with Shimon News Agency, and I'm coming to you live from the CIIA. And I'm currently being shown around the Thermo Fisher stall by Tony, the China president of Thermo Fisher. Now, Tony has promised to show me something quite interesting and new that you brought, and uh, it's just here behind us. So why don't you follow us through? Tony, tell me a little bit more about what this, I mean, from the outside, seems to be a a white box with some doors. It seems quite unassuming, if, uh, if you don't mind me saying. Sure, so this is, um, we're very excited to actually have this. This is our second booth, as I said, 100 square meters. And this um, mobile testing lab is very much designed to, um, to focus on testing COVID cases uh, anywhere. And it's mobile because we're finding that in China, there's a real need for us to uh, pick up a full solution 
and place it where there are hot spots or where, where there is a need for testing or more testing. So we've designed this, uh, this mobile lab to be taken, picked up and dropped off anywhere. Okay, and for, for those of you at home in China, there are testing centers all over the country. And so something like this, although it's uh, used here in China, it can actually be exported across the world. It's something that it's quite transferable. So you have the whole testing process in here and, and tell me, oh, in fact, you know what, let's, let's look at it. Can we look at it? That would be better. So Tony, if you can give us a little walk through. Absolutely, so please, after you. So it's really, um, the key feature of this mobile testing lab is that it has to be bio-contained, right? So in other words, as we pick up samples from patients, uh, we need to take them through, and you've just walked through the beginning of the process, the workflow. So we need to take the samples through into this area. We store them here for additional samples. As we're processing uh, the samples, it's prepared in this area here. So okay, so what, what are these silver, these, these big silver boxes that we're seeing on the side here? I can see that there's some lights, there's a window to the outside. Can you tell me a little bit about, I mean, what, what's the function of that? Yeah, so that's an important part, but it's sample collection, right? So as I talk about being biocontained, we cannot have any cross-contamination or external factors coming into this laboratory. So samples are opened up from the outside, place there with the windows closed this side's open and we we transport samples within the workflow okay now we're, we're quite close quarters here tony um so how many people are, would you normally have working in here at one time yeah so the great thing about the the workflow and and this area is that you could you can have up to two people um easily running through over ten thousand samples per day oh wow ten thousand samples yeah, so, you know, and then we could double that with the same amount of people if we change to pool sampling, for example. So some places decide to do single samples per patient. Others will pool sample just to get volume of patients through at the same time. Okay, and I'm a bit interested. I can see multiple, um, this is uh, some sort of water bath, am I correct? Yeah, exactly, yeah. and um, uh, other items that I see here. But my question is, are these all produced by you? Is this literally a, you know, a solution in a box? Is this what you're offering here? And it's exactly right. So we felt that as, as we think about the whole workflow for COVID testing, yeah. uh, we're, we're fortunate to be able to offer our entire solution and bring it all together under this one mobile lab. So everything you see here is manufactured by Thermo Fisher. That's brilliant. And let's just do one last walkthrough. So you were telling me that it's a process that goes from here. So um, this is the storage area, am I correct? Right, so we'll take samples, we'll, we'll biocontain them in here, storage. As we're processing, we'll take, we'll lift and bring through here. Okay. So this area here is basically sample preparation. So a sample will be centrifugated, so in other words, you're scaled down to, to the testing piece and then taken through to a set, another sample prep system which basically refines it okay. before then it's taken into detection. And what sort of amount of time are, are we talking here, Tony? You know, like, we get our samples down the bottom. <clears throat> How long until we come down to him? We know if there's been a positive. Yeah, so it depends on whether we're looking for single sample and result. Mm -hmm. So we can get a result within, you know, two hours yeah. for a single person if, if that's required. Otherwise, what we'll do is we'll take samples and within a day can process 10,000 results. Wow, wow. Okay, and uh, let's, let's walk ourselves out. Thank you so much for showing me this. So just for anyone who's, uh, who's just signed on right now, I'm Helen Bentley. This is Shimon News Agency at the CIIE 2020. And thank you very much, Tony. It's been wonderful you, to meet you and really, really great to understand more about the, this whole system. I hope you all tune in again for more of our um, lives. If you didn't catch all of this, you can watch it again on YouTube and on Twitter and on Facebook. And that's all from me and all from Tony. Thank you very much. You. And goodbye from the CIE just for the moment. Have a great day. Bye-bye. My name's Helen Bentley and this is Shimwa News Agency. I'm coming to you today from the CIIE in Shanghai. This is on from the 5th of November to the 10th of November and today is opening day. This venue has over 2,600 exhibitors and around 400,000 professional visitors expected to come here over